New drama in the AEW All In London attendance number as it's now being reported from an email from a local London council suggesting that the actual attendance for AEW All In was over 85,000 people despite the fact that just a couple of weeks ago a Freedom of Information Act from another local government had suggested that it was just over 72,000 people actually going through the turnstiles in the stadium. Details on this developing story plus Kenny Omega has blasted supposed fans who are sending hate to Jade Cargill for Following her switch from AEW to WWE, speaking of Jade Cargill, she's opened up about never receiving an AEW Women's World Championship opportunity during her time with the company. Tony Khan says that Better Than You Baby are doing an ungodly amount of merchandise right now and he also provided an update on Wardlow's AEW future. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. And let's start off talking about the attendance once again of AEW All In at London's Wembley Stadium here in the UK. Because this feels like a story a bit like WrestleMania 3. It's just going to go on and on and on. And different people are going to say different things and different numbers. And this is going to be heavily disputed. So now, we now have another number for the AEW All In attendance. Now, there's quite a few at this point. Now, since AEW All In occurred last month, a lot has been made about the attendance on the night. While AEW announced that there was a paid attendance of over 81,000, the turnstiles number for the event was much lower at just over 72,000. Well, now we have a new number courtesy of Brent City Council, which covers Wembley Stadium following a Freedom of Information Act uh, request, the council would send a reply on the attendance on their uh, on their record for the event, with the number exceeding both the previous reported numbers, noting that the attendance was over 85,000. This was the email in question, and again, it's just an email right now, so it's not totally, totally, totally official, and has been substantiated. We'll get to that in just a second, but this is what the email said. It said, Dear Blank, redacted obviously, further to your query, I can the attendance at this event at this event was 85,528. I hope this is helpful. Kind regards, Chris White, Director of Environment and Leisure, Brent Council. Now, this certainly again is a bit of a development from the prior number. Now, Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, who's pretty much the point person when it comes to all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's in the name WrestleNomics. He has seen this and he has posted the following. You can see it on the screen right now. He has said, quote, I've seen the screenshot of an email where someone from Brent Council appears to have disclosed yet a, n a different number as the attendance for All In. I've sent an email to the member of Brent Council who purportedly sent the email asking them to confirm whether the email is authentic. If real... There's a good chance the number is the number of tickets distributed for the event, which WrestleTix estimated on September 6th as 83,131. Now, again, a bit of background information about this because... Obviously, AEW had their own number, which was just over 81,000. Then we had this Freedom of Information Act, a uh, Freedom of Information Act request that came out a few weeks ago, which suggested the actual real attendance of people actually going through the turnstiles in the stadium, not including suites, but certainly going through the turnstiles. So this is also what Brent Council had said. This was this, uh, again, this, this Freedom of Information request that circulated widely online and on social media, which said the following, the actual numbers registered entering the stadium stadium through the turnstiles was 72,265. This is reflective of what attended on the nights and not the total number of tickets sold or no-shows, etc. So what Brandon Thurston is suggesting is maybe that 85,000 is actually tickets distributed as opposed to people that went through the turnstiles, but it's a big drop-off certainly. So what are your thoughts on the latest development about this? What are your thoughts on now some of the discrepancies from this number? You've got 85,000 from um, local London Council you've got 81,000 in terms of paid attendance, Tony Khan did say that the actual attendance was higher and then you've got the Freedom of Information request suggesting that it was actually around 72,000, what are your thoughts on these numbers, do you think we'll ever know, do you care even more about this attendance, let me know your thoughts as always in the comment section below, really interested to know what you guys think, now Jade Cargill of course is officially a WWE superstar and you, as you would expect probably social media reacted totally 
relatively normally to all of this going on. Of course, I'm saying this facetiously. WWE officially announced the signing of former AEW TBS champion Jade Cargill on September 26th, that being yesterday. This came after her contract with AEW expired following her TBS championship rematch with Chris Statlander on the September 15th episode of Rampage. WWE publicly announced Cargill's signature last night, showing videos of her attending the WWE Performance Center and training as well. As with any wrestling uh, wrestlers switching companies, some portion of fans sent hate to the wrestler for leaving one company for another, as nowadays on social media this sort of company tribalism certainly does exist, and it was no exception unfortunately with Cargill. AEW Executive Vice President Kenny Omega took to Twitter today where he shared his wishes to um, his well wishes to Car Cargill for her move, claiming that the fans sending hate to Cargill are quote, embarrassing and shameful. You can see the tweet in question on the screen. He said, quote, this may be news to a lot of fans out there, but when one one wrestler goes from one company to another, we tend to always wish them the best and cheer for them while they embark on their new journey. Genuinely, it's embarrassing and shameful that some fans aren't capable of the same. What are your thoughts on Kenny Omega's comments? Do you agree with him? Do you disagree with him? What are your thoughts on some of the negative reaction that Jade Cargill has received after going from AEW to WWE? Is it justified? Isn't it justified? Is it just pro wrestling and sports entertainment? Is it not that deep? Let me know your thoughts, as always, about it in the comment section below. Now, speaking of Jade Cargill as well, one thing she didn't do in AEW, of course, was win the AEW Women's World Championship. Despite reigning undefeated for almost the entirety of her AEW tenure, Jade Cargill never actually received a shot at the AEW. Women's World Championship, instead being solely featured as the division's TBS champion for over 500 days. Speaking on the Ringer's Masked Man show, Cargill was asked her opinion on AEW, perhaps missing opportunities with her during her time in the company, to which she brought up her separation from the Women's World title scene and the talent involved. She said, quote, I wish I would have worked with the amazing women who are holding the main bout. That's one of the things I really wanted to do. A couple of them reached out to me. I wish they um, would have had that match. I wish so as well. I could have gone on the mic and done a lot with those ladies. TV time is short and we have to work with what we've got. Of course, I could have had some dream matches before arriving to the grand stage. Cargill's, of course, final AEW match came on the September 13 episode of AEW Rampage, where she unsuccessfully challenged for Chris Statlander's TBS championship. So do you agree with what Jade Cargill is saying there? Would you have liked to have seen her challenge for the AEW Women's World Championship or at least cross paths with some of the bigger female stars in AEW, like a Britt Baker, like a Soraya, like a Hikaru, Arushida, like a Tony Storm, etc. Or do you think that her run and reign in AEW played out as it should have? Let me know your thoughts about that. Now, Tony Khan has been talking ahead of Wrestle Dream this weekend, and one thing he's spoken about is the popularity and success of the Better Than You Bay Bay tag team. One of the greatest stories in All Elite Wrestling over the past few months has been the budding best friendship of AEW World Champion MJF and Adam Cole. The two came together as part of the Wildcard Eliminator Tournament, where they earned a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship held by FTR. Cole and MJF now reign as the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions with a match scheduled against the Righteous for the titles at Wrestle Dream this coming Sunday. Speaking on the media call for the event, Tony Khan discussed MJF's recent run as part of the team, claiming that he and Cole have sold an ungodly amount of merchandise. He said, quote, you don't have to hate him anymore because he's our scumbag. That's something that he's really been embraced by the fans and it's shown because Better Than You Bebe has sold an ungodly amount of merchandise and they continue to rack up that merch money for us, which is awesome. They get these massive reactions and it's befitting of a top star and in this case, a fan favorite. So certainly a lot of merchandise being sold by MJF. Now, one person associated with MJF for a long time in his AEW career was Wardlow, but we haven't really seen the former TNT champion in quite some time, and the AEW president has provided a bit of an update when it comes to Wardlow's AEW future. Former three-time AEW TNT champion Wardlow has not been seen on AEW television since he lost the championship to Luchasaurus on the debut episode of AEW Collision back in June. Wardlow's absence has led to a lot of fans wondering where he's been and when he would return to AEW television following the absence. Tony Khan spoke on the Wrestle Dream media scrum where he was asked about Wardlow's status with the company and when he would return. He said, quote, Wardlow is a great star for us. He's been one of the greatest TNT champions and a great star. I'm a very big fan of Wardlow and he will surely be back on AEW TV when the time is right and he's still very much part of what we are doing here. Now, as far as plans or any timetable for Wardlow to return, we didn't get that, but Tony Khan says he is part of the plans for the future. So there you go, guys. This is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon.
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.